My name is Caitlin Kaiser and I've been a teacher with OutSchool since about August of 2019. One of my favorite types of classes is to teach and also to put together our flexible schedule classes. Now flexible schedule classes are a little bit confusing I think because they're just a little bit wishy-washy or at least it seems that way. They're very very different than live classes. So flex classes run entirely asynchronously. That means that you never meet over Zoom, you never have any kind of live interaction. Instead all of your interaction occurs within an online class classroom, within the OutSchool online classroom specifically. Because of that, all of your materials, all of your teaching, um, all of that has to be pre-recorded, it has to be shared with your students then, and it can take a little bit of time. They can be pretty scary to kind of jump into because it just requires a lot of time up front. Another thing that I've noticed a lot of um, with new teachers especially talking about flexible schedule classes is they kind of have an assumption that once you have all of those materials put together the whole class will kind of run itself you know that you'll just provide these playlists each week and then you're kind of done almost like it's passive income but I really want to make sure everybody knows flex classes are definitely not passive income they require a lot of work both up front and as you run them they I spend about an hour a week I would say in each of my flex classes um, just responding to questions answering students students guided comprehension questions, that type of stuff, and also sometimes helping them troubleshoot. Sometimes they have technology issues and they need help with that. So flex classes are definitely not passive income. They're a, a style of teaching here on OutSchool, but it's a really fun style of teaching. Now I have a flexible schedule class, the history of rock and roll that is scheduled to begin in about a week and a half. And fortunately I have, or unfortunately for me, but fortunately for you, um, I have not put all of my materials together yet. So I have about an entire week's worth of materials to put together here. That includes a handout. I make a PowerPoint to go with it. I make video lectures. I make video um, listening playlists or song listening playlists as it is. Um, and I also create Bitmoji virtual classrooms to go with all of my flex classes. So I thought I would take you along, show you all of the, the whole thing here, show you the process, and also just answer some questions kind of as they come up. So let's get started. day three of working on this flexible schedule class. So what usually happens for my flex classes just because of the way my teaching schedule works is I tend to work on them kind of in little bits throughout the week, um, putting together my handouts, putting together any video transcripts, putting together my YouTube playlists, all of that good stuff. So I've been working on this for about three days at this point. I've put in uh, about an hour and a half or so. And the goal for today is to finish all of my handouts, to get my YouTube playlist put together, and to start recording my Flex Class videos. After I record those videos, the next steps will be putting together a Google Classroom, which I'll show you that process, and also scheduling this post to post into my classroom automatically, which I'll talk about when we get there. Let's get back to work. This is Caitlin from the future. Um, I recorded a clip right before I started recording my videos, my video lectures, kind of talking about the process up until this point, and that clip has completely disappeared. So I figured I would just kind of do one now and kind of go over that again. So after I spent about two hours or so putting all of my handouts together, getting everything ready, lots of research went into all of that, it was time to record my video lecture. So when I record my video lecture, I tend to use uh, two different programs. So either I use Loom, which is a screen grabbing software, so it will record your screen. You can add your video and you can move your video around. So I really, really like that one. It seems to be pretty engaging for my students. And the other option that I sometimes use is a program called Toonly, which turns me into a little animated character. That one's really great if I'm presenting something that has tons and 
tons and tons of visuals. For example, biographies are really helpful in Toonly because I can show different pictures from points of the people's lives. I can put times up, um, years, that type of stuff up on the screen. So Toonly can be pretty helpful for that. For this particular class though, I've decided to use Loom. So after this clip, you'll see a tiny little bit of what the beginning of my class looks like, what the introduction looks like. All together, recording the video lecture took me about an hour. Hello everyone. Welcome to week two of our class. So this week we're going to keep talking about the history of rock and roll by talking about the birth of rock and roll. Talking about some of the early things that went along with rock and roll, the kind of influences that occurred, and also talking a little bit about some important rock stars. This is my video editing process. So I'm using a program called DaVinci Resolve. It's a free program. I'll make sure to list it down below. And editing each clip usually takes me between 30 to 60 seconds. All right, the video lectures are all recorded. I loaded them all up to YouTube and also up to Google Drive, put them into a YouTube playlist, put all of my extra videos into that playlist as well, and also created a listening playlist. This class that I'm putting together is a history of rock and roll class. So in addition to giving my students video lectures to watch, I also give them listening playlists to listen to. Um, something to be cautious of if you're unfamiliar or if you're not quite sure is in flexible schedule classes, it, well in all classes really, but in flexible schedule classes especially, you don't want to record yourself like streaming videos if you use YouTube videos in your flex class. The best way to actually do that is to um, kind of break your video, so stop your recording and then insert whatever video you want to be shown to your students into a playlist. Then when they click on that playlist, they'll be able to watch it continuously if they want or they can stop and pause it. But more importantly, whoever created that video to begin with is going to get the ad revenue if they have it on there um, and they're also going to get credit for those views. So that's really important. We want to make sure everybody who, you know, works and creates that content for us on YouTube and gives it to us for free, we want to make sure that they get they get the credit that they deserve for that. So make sure that you don't stream your videos um, in your screen recording. So as far as what's left here, the last thing to do is to put together my Bitmoji Virtual Classroom. Now I have a video explaining a little bit more about how I put this together. Um, what I've done for this particular week, just to save myself time, is I've actually created a copy of my week one classroom. And I'm just going to update it. I'm going to add some extra elements, change out my playlist, change out my Google Drive folder. Um, and yeah, just kind of switch it up a little, but keep it fairly similar just because there's no point in reinventing the wheel. It's also probably important to mention here um, that my students know what these icons mean because I have a video where I describe what they can expect to see in the classroom. So I mentioned, you know, that the leave me a note thing leads to a Google Jamboard where they can leave comments. And I mentioned that if they click on the YouTube playlist, that's going to take them to their video lecture. And if they click on the radio, that's going to take them to their listening lecture or their listening playlist rather, et cetera, et cetera. So if you're going to use a Bitmoji Virtual Classroom, definitely, definitely make sure that you make sure your students um, know what all of these different icons mean. Otherwise, they're probably going to get a little overwhelmed and also a little bit confused. So as far as our time count is concerned, we are officially at three hours spent putting this lecture together for the week. All I need to do now is just update this classroom. So let's jump on into updating the classroom here. Obviously, I need to switch that name. And the next thing I need to do is just switch out my folders. So I always um, have like put all of my links in one spot. It's really helpful. It just makes everything easier. And I just need to switch out my links. So I'm doing that now. There's a lot of really convenient um, Google shortcuts as well, keyboard shortcuts for all of this. So if you're trying to put this together for yourself and you're getting annoyed um, having to go to like insert link, you can also do it by hitting command K or apple sign K depending on what type of computer you've got. So that's kind of helpful to know. Also just so everybody knows what's kind of going on here. If you click on my blackboard, it takes my students to that um, video that explains the different icons. I figured if they're going to start clicking around on something, that would be a decent place to start. And if they click on me, it takes them to an introduction video. All right, so that's kind of the most basic part of this Bitmoji classroom. 
I think I'm going to go ahead, flip my microphone off, insert some lovely, lovely music for everybody, um, and add the rest of it. What I'm going to do for this particular week, we're learning about some different icons in rock and roll history. I've got pictures of them that I've edited into frames in Canva, and all of those pictures are going to link to a biography. So my students can answer one of their questions where I'm asking them to uh, research one of the artists we talked about this week and give me um, a biography and also share some of their kind of thoughts and reactions to their pieces. So I think I will go ahead and add that on in and I will be back to talk about the extent of how long this has actually taken me to put this week together and some kind of helpful tips and things that I might do differently or things that I think a lot of people maybe don't realize about flex classes. two of my history and rock and roll class is officially finished. Um, putting the handout together took about two hours. It took another hour to record and also edit my lecture videos. And then it took about 20 minutes or so to get everything ready into that Bitmoji classroom to organize my YouTube playlist, to organize my Google Drive folders, all of that good stuff. So ultimately the whole thing took a little over three hours. Now that's for just one week of this class. You know, this is a nine week long class. So altogether this nine week long class is probably going to look at about 27 hours of work or so. So when we kind of look at flexible schedule classes, and one of the reasons why I really wanted to make this video is because so many people kind of see them as like passive income, like they're just super, super easy to put together. It's not a big deal. You, you know, you get it all finished up and then it's kind of good to go. But the work isn't done here. So week two is completely finished. I have a student who's enrolling in this class or has already enrolled, I should say, and our class begins, oh, in about a week now. Um, and when that student is enrolled in our class, in addition to having to post all of these links, give all of these resources, we have weekly comprehension questions where I have to communicate with my students. Um, I usually give them some kind of optional listening activities and want to know their thoughts, know their opinions. I sometimes have to answer questions. So there's still a lot of work that goes into a flex class. I would say on average, on a normal week, I would spend about an hour um, in each of my flexible schedule classes, answering questions, responding to questions, grading questions, depending on the class. So they're definitely not passive income. After putting in all of this work, after my 27 hours of work is finished for this class, those materials will be done, but the work still has to continue once I list and have students enrolled in that flex class. So if you're somebody who wants to put together a flex class, I highly recommend them. They're a lot of fun to put together. I find that it's such a great way for my students to dig deep into um, topics that we just wouldn't have time to cover together in class. For example, this history of rock and roll class, this week we were talking about the birth of rock and roll and talking about important people like Chuck Berry and Jerry Lee Lewis and Elvis Presley. And we get to really listen to tons and tons and tons of examples because they have all the time for the week to listen to those things. In a live class, we wouldn't have time to listen to them and discuss them together. You know, it's a very different type of setup when you're confined to just an hour a week as opposed to a flexible schedule class where my students can take an hour a week or they can take five or six hours a week, depending on their schedule and depending on their interest. So in conclusion, it took me about three hours to put all of this together. Um, I hope that it was helpful for you. I hope that it kind of gave you some insight into what it's like to put one of these classes together. And I will be sure to link some of the things that I mentioned, video editing software, um, video capturing software, all of that good stuff. I'll make sure to link that down below. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your week and I hope to help you out again in the future. Bye for now.